Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing Chiching number 31. So let's just get started on where I left off last. Uh, so the first thing I have is a vase. This was a Clasone vase. I always have a hard time pronouncing that word. Uh, this sold for $29.99 and I can't remember exactly where I got it or what I paid for it. Um, but I would say I spent less than $2 on that. The next thing I had for a while, and you guys know I kind of have this relationship with this brand, the Andrea by Sedeck. I love picking up their stuff. I think that they make really gorgeous pieces, but I do have a hard time selling it. Now, this was kind of, uh, did you hear that? I just got a cha-ching while I'm recording my cha-ching video. I love that. Anyway, so this is one of those instances where um, something by that brand was actually worth quite a bit of money. Uh, this is a parrot. It's just a like ceramic statuette uh, parrot piece that was by Andrea by Sedeck. Um, Eric actually won this at an auction and I do believe um, he won it for less than $5 and this sold for $84.99. Um, I think we probably could have got a little more for it had we had two of them because I did see um, auctions that ended with like a pair of them that went for more money. Um, however, this did sit for a while. It was not a quick seller by any means, but it did sell and it sold for a pretty high price. So it's definitely a brand that, you know, I, I still like to pick up, um, just because I really like their stuff, but, um, it's definitely like a hit or miss brand in my opinion. Uh, next was just this stone carved totem pole. It was made out of like this heavy like stone material. I got this at a yard sale and I believed I pay like a dollar for it. I think it was kind of like a touristy piece. It was marked Cancun, Mexico on the bottom. I was just drawn to it and decided to pick it up and it sold for $19.99. Next thing I have is a pair of vintage Avon Minnie Mouse earrings. Uh, these just reminded me of my childhood. It was just total nostalgia for me. So I picked them up. I think, I feel like, mm, I can't remember if I got them at a yard sale or a thrift store, but I definitely paid less than $2 for them. They sold for $11.99. So I, I mean, yes, they were Avon, but they were also Disney as well and vintage. Uh, next item I have was that old Gillette hairspray. Do you guys remember me picking this up at a yard sale? I forget what was on it. I don't know if it was a dollar or 50 cents. It was one, one of the two. Um, I just happened to look it up since it was an old beauty product. I didn't know Gillette even had made hairspray, but at one point they did. And it sold for $59.99. So that's crazy. It's why I always say like if you find vintage beauty products or just older beauty products in general, like definitely look them up because some of them can go for a lot of money. Not everything. That's why it's important to um, just look it up when you find it. But that's definitely a hairspray if you ever see it, especially if you're like at an estate sale or something and you're in like the bathroom area and you just find this random can of Gillette hairspray, pick it up. And next was a little bud vase by Bleak. Uh, this sold for $18.99. I had this for a while and totally forgot to list it. It was in my death pile. Um, Eric and I picked this up at Salvation Army and I'd say I spent less than $2 on it. Um, I do have like two other pieces of Bleak that have not sold yet that I've had for a while. So I might have to like go in and lower uh, prices on those. Uh, but this piece actually sold fairly quickly. Once I got it listed, that is. <laughs> um, next was a Men's Affliction Long Sleeved Thermal Shirt. This sold for $25.99 and I got that at a yard sale for $3.00. 
this next item actually belonged to my mom. It was an old bottle of JLo Love at First Glow perfume. This was a very small bottle. It was only one ounce and there was not a whole lot of product left in it, but they do not make the fragrance anymore and it is sought after. And that actually sold for $19.99, which is awesome for just, you know, uh, the amount of product that it really was. Uh, this next item also came from my parents' house. Um, it was a new in-package uh, Kellogg Snap Crackle and Pop Christmas ornament uh, that sold for $9.99. I actually had two of these. Um, the other one will probably be in another cha-ching video because I haven't gotten there yet, um, but both of them did sell. So people do like advertising pieces. So just throwing that out there if you did not know. Um, next was a Tigger mug. I got this at a yard sale along with the keychain. I put the keychain together with the mug and I had that intention when I purchased them at the yard sale that I was going to lot them up together. So I think I probably paid about a dollar for the mug and maybe like 50 cents for the keychain. So all in about a dollar 50 for that. And I sold the lot together for $19.99. So it's just a idea a suggestion like if you have two similar like things um you know maybe like lot like if it's not worth um selling something um completely by itself but to lot it together with something of the same you know uh character or what have you so um yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next item was a Mickey Mouse Christmas inflatable. This is one of those uh, things you put outside that um, fills with air and that kind of thing. I got this at a yard sale. It was brand new. Like the people never took it out of the box, never used it. Uh, they had $20 on it and I sold it for $139.99, so that was an awesome sale. Um, definitely, um, just Christmas decorations in general, holiday decorations. I mean, like, I didn't know that that was new, but I ended up opening the box. I looked inside, and everything looked like it was still, like, packed in there, not used. Um, but I also double-checked with them just to make sure. I asked them, I was like, has this ever been taken out of the box? Has it ever been used? And they said, no, it was never used. So, um, got that for $20, so not too bad there. Uh, next thing was a set of Nick and Nora pajamas. These had a sock monkey print on. Um, I sold those for $18.99, and I think I got these at a thrift store. I can't remember exactly what I paid for them. I guess around maybe $5. Um, I always heard Nick and Nora pajamas did really well. I think I've sold every pair that I've purchased to resell, but I definitely probably feel like the adult sizes might do a little bit better. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it comes to comes to those pajamas. I don't come across them super often, uh, but when I do, I do tend to pick them up just because, you know, I heard that they sold well. And like I said, I think I've sold one other pair before and I actually have a pair I need to list. Story of my life. Uh, next was a pair of roller skates. Um, that was another thing that I was hearing people were saying that uh, roller skates were just selling really well here lately. These are by a brand called Lib Libida, if I wrote that down right. Sometimes, you know, I'm looking at my phone and I'm writing down stuff and I'm like looking at my handwriting like, what does that say? Because I don't have the actual listing in front of my face. I like write down on a piece of paper. Anyway, uh, these sold for $53. I got them at a yard sale and I think I think I might have spent $10 on them. I do remember them wanting a little bit for them since they were really nice skates. I can't remember exactly what I paid for them though, but it definitely was not more than 10. And I put them up on auction because I wasn't sure exactly what to ask for them and they sold for 53. So that's pretty dang good if you ask me. Uh, next was a Victoria's Secret body spray in the soft and pure. This was a body splash. 
This sold for $39.99 and I had this in my collection for a while um, but I know it definitely came from a yard sale and I probably paid like one to two dollars for it. So if you have like an excessive amount of Victoria's Secret body sprays or even Bath and Body Works like and you don't really use them very much like check them out see what they're selling for because some of them sell really really well if they are no longer uh, made. Next thing I have a pair of Clark's black boots. I feel like I just recently purchased these and I can't remember where I bought them or what I paid for them. Oh my gosh, I am so horrible sometimes with remembering things, especially here lately. Like, just so much stuff going on. Anyway, these sold for $41.99. I can't imagine I paid more than five for them. Um, but yeah, you guys know I like picking up Clarks. Not all Clarks sell super duper well, but some of them do. And next was a Disney VHS movie called Kiki's Delivery Service. I actually got this free um, from a curb alert alongside of the road. It was it sold for $12.99, so not bad for not paying anything for it. And it's a VHS tape. Uh, next was a vintage scarf by Vera. It had these real, it had a really cute print of these like houses or buildings all over it. That sold for ten dollars and ninety nine cents. I probably pay like a quarter or fifty cents for it at a yard sale. Uh, next thing was a pair of Mark Fisher booties. I got these at a thrift store. I actually bought two pairs. I had found two of the same exact Mark Fisher booties at this thrift store and I sold the other pair a while back. Um, probably, I think I sold those for just a little bit more. These ones had like more of a snakeskin type print and there was like one little blemish on them. Uh, but they still sold for $59.99, so that's definitely a brand to keep an eye out for as far as shoes go. I mean, I, I'm assuming they probably make clothes and stuff as well, but I've never found anything by that brand before, I don't believe, other than those booties. Uh, next thing I got at a yard sale, it was this um, Kachina-type doll. It said, like, on the bottom... There was like a handwritten little thing describing what it was and it was described as a hun bear h-o-n and then like what it kind of helped protect from and that sold for $29.99 i grabbed it on a whim i thought it was just really unique and interesting i do believe i paid a dollar for it so not too bad for that um, next was a pair of Pandair sneakers, Pandir sneakers. I sold another pair of these a while back as well. These ones were black. I think I had sold a navy blue pair uh, before. And I got these at a yard sale for $5. Um, and they sold for $59.99. So that's kind of crazy. Um, I had never heard of that brand before. And when I was at the yard sale, I decided to look up the brand and I saw that it was like a really expensive kind of like orthopedic type shoe. Um, so anytime, and I think I've said before, like anytime I see a brand that just is not something I've ever seen before, chances are it's usually some expensive like orthopedic type shoe it turns out to be. Um, so if you're ever just like looking at shoes and you come across a pair and you're like, okay, I've never heard of these. So are these like some sort of generic thing or are they worth like a hundred dollars? So it's definitely something to look out for. Next was a pair of Lucky Brand jeans. These sold for $10.99. And I feel like I had these for a long time. I believe they came from a fill -a bag rummage sale. So I probably paid like less than a dollar for them. Um, but I do feel like Lucky Brand is a harder brand to sell. I'm not sure why exactly, but I just, I have a hard time selling it. Uh, next is a pair of red cowboy boots by the brand Corral. These sold for $68.99. And I got them at a yard sale and I believe I paid either $5 for them or $10. I remember they were like super cheap and I couldn't believe that they wanted so little for them. That's why I'm thinking it was more like $5. Um, next 
was a little lot I put together. Again, I got it at a yard sale and I decided to lot them together because they were um, similar. They were by Hallmark from their Kitty Car Collection. So like, you know, Hallmark always does different like little villages and stuff like that just little collections and this um it was a sign it was like a lamppost with a sign that went across and then there was also a little um kitty car classics uh pin like brooch and i put those together those sold for $14.99 and i believe i paid a dollar for the sign and a quarter or 50 cents for the pin uh, let's see. Next was those set of vintage Napco Christmas Angel Carolers with the spaghetti trim. Um, these came from one of those Christmas mystery boxes I got for free alongside of a curb. Um, those sold for $17.50 and I didn't pay anything for them, so that's awesome. Uh, the next item was just really, like, I... I just had learned about it. Um, I got this at a yard sale. It was a church yard sale. It was a Mary Had a Little Lamb music box by Joseph Originals. Um, I had never known about Joseph Originals before. I got it because I thought it was really pretty. Um, I think I paid 50 cents for it or a dollar. It sold for $73. So definitely if you ever come across anything Joseph Originals, it's worth picking up. Um, this even had a blemish, like it had broke at one point. I think it was the head um, and was repaired and it still sold for a decent amount. So, and then I was seeing when I looked this up, like someone was even selling it without like the music box portion and even that sold um, for less than mine, but still for a decent amount considering the whole music box compartment was completely missing out of it. Um, so I just kind of learned about Joseph Originals when I went to list that. I was like, oh my gosh, because I had no idea really exactly what I had type of thing. Uh, next was a vintage Tupperware. This was a two cup measuring cup. Um, this came from my parents' house and that sold for $21. Um, I've I've been doing pretty well with vintage Tupperware. I prefer selling the like measuring cups and the measuring spoons and that type of thing. I feel like when it comes to the containers, I don't have the best of luck. Like I'll open them and they'll have like the most horrendous smell inside. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they, like, they stink really bad. And then also um, like the insides or even like the outsides will be like all scratched up. And I don't know. Um, it's something that I need to do a little more research on because if people are still buying them, like in that type of condition then maybe I should start picking them up but I'm a little more like hesitant um when I see and or <laughs> smell them um, when I'm out and about but it seems like vintage Tupperware does pretty well uh next was a Boyd's Bears trinket box this one was for the month of February that sold for $15.99 and I think I got that at a yard sale for a dollar Next thing was a pair of Doc Martens boots. These were actually made of canvas. They were not leather. They were like a gray canvas boot, uh, but they still sold for $49.99. Obviously, had they been like the leather boots, they would have sold for more, um, but I think I only paid about like $5 for them at a yard sale. So I'm glad I picked them up. I remember when I was at that yard sale, I was hesitant about picking them up just because you know, they weren't leather or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm coming to the understanding of if it's Doc Martens, just buy them regardless. Um, next was, oh, this was that, um, vintage cat gum parker. So it looked like a cat laying on its back and it said gum parker on the belly, I guess, to put your chewed up piece of gum on it. It was kind of gross. It was definitely like something Violet Beauregard would have done in Willy Wonka. Um, this sold for $12.99 and I got it at a yard sale. I think I paid 10 cents for it. Um, maybe a quarter, but I definitely feel like it was 10 cents. 
Um, let's see. Next was a set of three Lion King Polly Pocket figures. So these were sold kind of like as replacements because I didn't have the um the actual Polly Pocket play set, just the figures. These came out of a box of vintage like Barbie toys and just vintage toys in general. I got it at a yard sale for five dollars for the whole box and I still have most of what's in that box. I still have to go through it and kind of like figure out what goes together um, type of thing. But these did and I found out, you know, they went to a Polly Pocket play set um, and those sold for $24.99 and they were just like three little random um, tiny little Polly Pocket figures from The Lion King. Uh, next thing was a Dooney and Burke wristlet. This actually went to a subscriber. I purchased this at Goodwill and I believe I paid $4.99 for it and it sold for $50. It was definitely a, um, a really nice print and one I think that was a little more desirable um, than some other Dooney prints that have come out. Um, cause with Dooney and Burke, I feel like I love that brand. Like the person I'm carrying currently is a Dooney and, um, you know, some of the stuff sells really well and some not so much. So again, like with pretty much anything in any brand, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, but that one was a really nice print. Uh, next was this, uh, glass art rooster. I can't remember where I got him. I'm sure he came from a yard sale. Um, I can't imagine paying any more than $3 for him. And he sold for $25.99. Um, he didn't have any kind of like markings on him. So I don't really know, you know, where he originally came from or anything like that. Next item was a vintage Reba McIntyre shirt that sold for $29.99. I got that at a yard sale. I had gotten a whole bunch of vintage uh, Reba McIntyre shirts and some other vintage country shirts for a dollar a piece. So I paid a dollar for that. Uh, next was a Joseph Ribkoff jacket. It had this really pretty like rhinestone trim down the front that sold for $26.99. And I'm pretty sure that came from a thrift store and I'm sure I paid less than five for it. I'd say maybe around three or four. I like picking up Joseph Ribkoff. I think that brand makes really beautiful clothing, but as I've stated before, hit or miss, hit or miss. Uh, next was a vintage, this was um, a ger like a wooden Germany uh, smoker. It was made to look like Sherlock Holmes. I got this at a yard sale. I'm pretty sure I paid a dollar or two dollars for it. Um, Cause at that sale I purchased th this one, the Sherlock Holmes one. And then I also got a Santa Claus. I kept the Santa Claus. He's actually down in my living room right now. I use him as decor. I don't actually use him. Like I don't put the incense cone in him or anything like that. But um, it was also a German made one. And that's all for $62.99. Um, definitely like the wooden German um, like smokers and nutcrackers and that type of thing. I mean, they're expensive to begin with. So um, they definitely have a nice resale value as well. Now that took a while to sell. Um, but, you know, just always looking for the right uh, person, you know, and finally found the right person. So that did sell. Uh, next was a lot of vintage sequin bead ornaments. These came from uh, one of those mystery Christmas boxes I got for free along the curb. Those sold for $19.99. So again, I didn't pay anything for them. I got a Chaps cardigan that sold also for $19.99. And I do believe this came from a fill -a bag rummage sale, I want to say. So a dollar or less for that. A pair of men's jeans. These were by a brand called Muka Muka or Mucka Mucka. <laughs> I've never heard of it before. Um, those sold for $19.99. And funna funnily, is, funnily is not a word. I just made it a word. Funnily, uh, the person who bought it actually lives in my old hometown. So 
<laughs> that was really interesting when I went to print out that ad, uh, the shipping label. Oh, and those I got for free, again, from a Curb Alert. Um, next was a set of two, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Clarice. These were plushies, um, but they are still had their ta their original tags on, and when you, um, press their little button, um, Rudolph's nose lit up and Clarice's cheeks kind of glowed, like, blushed. And these worked, they played perfectly. Those sold for $45.99, and I got those at a yard sale, and I believe I paid a dollar a piece for them, so $2 uh, for those. Uh, next was a set of vintage candy cane blow molds. Um, Eric picked these up at a yard sale, and I feel like maybe they were a dollar a piece. I believe they were a dollar a piece, and I think there were seven of them, so $7 total. Those sold for... $79.99. So, I mean, I say all the time, blow molds, blow molds, blow molds, just buy the blow molds because they sell and they sell really well. Not in this cha-ching, but if you guys have seen uh, my videos and you saw that ghost blow mold that I recently got at the thrift store, that'll be in another cha-ching because I already sold that. Um, okay, next was a NFL Steelers bracelet. I got this, I'm assuming at a yard sale. I mean, maybe I picked it up at a thrift store, uh, but I can't imagine I paid more than a dollar for it. It sold for $10.79. Took a while to sell this too, but since Christmas is coming and it was new in package, um, it might be like a stocking stuffer or a Christmas gift. Um, so here's another Dooney and Burke purse. This one, this one was a gray pebbled, uh, look like leather. It was a pebbled leather purse. Um, I got this at a fill bank rummage sale, so I paid a dollar or less for it. Um, this did have issues to it. I put it up on auction just to kind of give, you know, everyone, like, the ability to kind of determine the price because, um, you know, there was issues with it. And when I got it, I didn't know if I was going to be able to, like, clean it up at all or anything like that and I did what I could with it but I just I wasn't getting anywhere um but anyway that sold for $26 so not a whole lot but there were issues with it uh next was a coach plaid wool purse I got this at a yard sale for I believe four or five dollars and that sold for $35.99 uh, next was a candle by Party Light. It was in the scent Clementine and Clove. That sold for $15.99, and I got it at Goodwill for $1.99. I sold a vintage, oh my god, this was more like antique. It was from 1924, a Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales book. I got this at a yard sale for $1, and I sold it for $51. Um... This probably could have went for more money, but again, there were issues with it. The binding um, kind of came apart. Uh, the spine had come, come la, 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 la. I had some Starbucks. Um, the binding spine came apart from the binding spine. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, it definitely had issues, but um, had it not, it probably could have went for more money than that. Um, so another pair of roller skates. These ones were uh, kids. They were by Chicago, pink and white. Um, I got these at a yard sale. I believe I paid two or three dollars for them. They sold for twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. These were in a youth size, but I'll, if you guys <laughs> aren't aware, don't I'm, I'm assuming most people know this, but with kids sizes. They do equivalent to equivalent to a women's size or a men's size, like you know, if they're youth uh, boys. Um, so these were like the equivalent to a women's. I want to say size seven. Um, I tried them on; they fit me perfectly. I was like, "This is a really bad idea, Michelle." Like I put them on, and you know, Eric wasn't even home, so I probably shouldn't have done that because I am just the most clumsiest person ever. Uh, but they fit me great, and I got all excited, and then got scared really fast and decided to take them off because <laughs> I'm prone to breaking bones. Um, so 
yeah anyway next <laughs> um i sold that torrid dress that i just got not that long ago um i purchased this at a thrift store for four dollars and it sold for twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents uh another like vintage older book not quite as old as the um, hans christian anderson fairy tales book but it was called the doll and the kitten that sold for nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents and i think i picked that up at a yard sale for like less than a dollar at that point i was kind of i wouldn't say collecting vintage children's books but i liked picking up vintage children's books um I just love the illustrations in them and also how older books smell. <laughs> so yeah, that was part of my collection for a little while. Uh, the next thing was actually um, me trying to do a little retail arbitrage. I do not normally do it just because I, if you know, as you watch my chiching videos and my videos, you know, I don't like to spend a lot of money on the stuff that I buy to resell. I like to, I like to buy low and sell high as much as possible um but i had heard through the grapevine like months ago that these hatchimals pixies flyers i had seen it on like one of the ebay facebook groups someone was saying how they were going to be like one of the hot toys for christmas this year i don't know how they knew or anything like that but um they were saying like they were having a hard time like every time they'd go look looking for one it would always be out of stock so that was probably like one of the reasons they were saying this so eric and i were at walmart one day and we noticed that there were two in stock so we just decided to get them um and try to do a little retail arbitrage on them so i forgot to write down exactly what i paid for it it sold for $59, well, one of them. I didn't post the other one yet. I'm kind of waiting a little bit just to see if, like, the price increases as they get harder to find type of thing. Anyway, that one sold for $59.99. So, um, my, my total of what I pocketed from that was about $22 and some change. So, not, like, a ton of money, but you know, it's still not bad. I just don't like putting um, a lot of money into something. You know what I mean? Because there's no real guarantee that it's going to be a hot toy and it's going to sell for a ton of money type of thing. So maybe I lucked out a little bit on that. Maybe the price will increase. I do not know. Um, but if it would happen to not, I'm the type of person that I'll tuck this in a tote for 10 years and then I'll sell it once it becomes vintage. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world type of situation if, you know, it's not worth me listing the other one right now kind of thing. And the last thing that I have for this cha-ching is a vintage Wheaton spice jar for cum cumin seed. That's over $15.99 and I had a, I had gotten a lot of these at a yard sale. Um, I think it was six of them for $6, so a dollar a piece. I paid a dollar for it. Um, I think I still have a couple more I have to list, but every single wheat and glass spice jar I have uh, listed has sold. So um, definitely something that, you know, if I ever came across them again, I'd buy them. Um, and then, as I have been doing with my other chichings here lately, like if, uh, if like if issues have arisen, um, I was going to talk about them, and I have a couple a couple things to talk about. Um, so first, not so interesting. Um, since we were getting close, this would have been like the week of Black Friday. I did run a ten percent off sale on my store. So, um, you know, it did help me sell some things. I only did 10%, um, but I, I did sell like a, a decent amount. I felt like it helped generate some sales and with some like, you know, some stale merchandise. Um, so I decided to do another one. So I, I'm having one right now. Um, maybe it ended. I don't even remember what day I decided to end it on. Um, so yeah, I did run a sale to kind of help, um, you know, get some inventory moving along type of thing. Uh, the only issue that really arose as far as um, reselling, I did have one sale that was canceled. Um, the buyer um, asked if I could cancel the sale, so I did. 
Um, and you know, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. Um, I did end up relisting the item and it sold again. So, um, not a big deal there though. The main thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, um, in this video, as far as issues go, as of me writing up these, uh, chichings, which is today, um, I wrote these up today and I'm recording today. This video is going up tomorrow. So this is a day, um, that you'll see this. But out of, I, I go over 50 items of the things that I sold. Out of this 50, nine of these items have not been delivered yet. There is a huge issue going on. It's not just me. Um, if you're a reseller, you're probably dealing with it yourself right now. Um, USPS is backlogged. I mean, you know, Christmas is coming, so obviously there's tons of uh, mail going through the system right now, um, but it seems to be a big problem, and not just with first class mail. A lot of these, um, a lot of these packages that have not been delivered yet still are priority mail packages, and typically, you know, you pay more for a priority because um, it's supposed to get there sooner. But right now, I don't think that's <laughs> really doing much because it seems like my priority packages are um, part of the the problem here. So um, yeah, that's just an issue that is going on right now. Um, so if you if you like I said, if you are a reseller, you're probably seeing it yourself. Um, if you are a buyer and you're still waiting for something. Um, all I can say is to just try and be a little bit patient about the mail system in general right now because there there's definitely like known problems currently. Like every time I get on Facebook and I see a post from one of the eBay Facebook groups, there's someone um, complaining about their packages taking forever to, to move along from one destination to the next. And I'm noticing it too. Um, so nine, normally when I do my cha-chings, everything that I'm going over has already been delivered. Like, because I'm usually behind recording my cha-chings. So to have nine things out of, out of this 50 here still not be at their destination is a little concerning. Um, so far, no one has really put up a huge fuss about it. Um, I did not hear anything from anyone like demanding to know where their item is. Um, but obviously once, once time has passed and everything, um, if it still isn't delivered, I'm probably gonna have to start opening up, um, some package requests to look into where, where the packages are to try to get them moving along somehow, because, um, it is, it's, it's alarming to see that you know, your items that were supposed to have been delivered by now have not been delivered. Um, but yeah, that's everything for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know down below what you thought and if you yourself are having issues with um, USPS and shipping times and stuff like that or if you've heard, you know, other people having, having the same problems. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.